Hey, Somerville, Janet Cormier back. And today we are gonna have so much fun. You're not gonna believe this artist, Jennifer Weigel, who is a visual artist and also a performance artist. And she's got lots of other art stuff going on with her is going to, is here. She's here in the studio. Can you believe this? With her dynamite 70s dress. <laughs> oh my God, you go girl. You just go. <laughs> if we could get up, if we weren't tied down with the mics, we would be doing like, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so thank you for coming. I mean, I saw your work and I wasn't prepared mm -hmm. for how, how much more when you were trying to describe it to me, how much more. This will make you smile. You have to come down for the month of May, which makes sense because you would have already been tired from April and the tax thing and all that confusion. So you come down to SCAT and for the month of May, you will laugh and see this artwork and you will just, it'll give you a whole different perspective on what you can do and how creative you can be. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. I mean, your work, when you're trying to describe it to me, I, I wasn't really comprehending, but um, you do photography, and so it's based on it's your photography, but it is the spin that you put on your photography, right? Con uh, combining that with performance art. I do a lot of performance art. I do a lot of my own documentation of it. Um, I've worked with other people on documentation as well, mm -hmm. and I enjoy working in a lot of different media. Um, I'm very costume based. I enjoy experimenting with different clothes. And in costume, I like to work with things that I find. So I hit up at the thrift stores and Goodwill and all kinds of different venues. Another reason we bond. <laughs> oh my God, this woman is just she's sensational. And you've brought us some books that you've done. Um, can I start with this one? Mm -hmm. I, this is just so, Phenomenal. Tell us the process. You said it's on metal? This is printed on metal. Um, I've been working with a lot of alternative printing processes through different companies online. And you can get photographs printed on all kinds of different surfaces. But I like the metal because there's just such a richness to it and a luster. And then this one is an image of me holding the, the convex mirror in front of my face. And it's a commentary on selfie culture and how everybody's always taking selfies. And I've got a bunch of different pieces along those lines, including a performance art piece that I'm exploring right now. Selfie culture is like, it's, I can't get into it, but I'm amazed by how many people take pictures of themselves in every pose. And, they, and I, the women are like, with the mouth. <laughs> and and it, it's just amazing. Um, and then this piece, this is the many faces of Jennifer. <laughs> these, these are excerpts. Um, these were pieces that I had done originally for an open studios tour before I moved here. And I took uh, my now ex and I took all of these images of myself in these different costumes. And then each one has just one word, one kind of snapshot word associated with it. And they were part of a scavenger hunt during the open studios event so that you could go and look for them as part of the open studios. And I hid them throughout 48 artist studios. Must have been a big hit. And a lot of people enjoyed looking for them. There were prizes associated with it. Did and you the, give anyone pictures of themselves? No, no, they were all just photos of me in different costumes, just kind of tongue in cheek, funny kinds of things. It's, how did you start with this? This is an unusual, um, art form, or a, an unusual, at least for, for me, to see the performance. I love the idea of performance and then photography, or you know, bringing the two together. How did that start? It kind of evolved out of necessity, because when you are working in performance, you're working in something that's time-based, that's by nature very ephemeral and fleeting. And you have to find some way to document what you've been doing. And so the photography kind of evolved out of that, uh, just out of necessity, mm -hmm. so that I could find ways to document some of my pieces more. Mm -hmm. We don't know if this is going to work, may not. 
Uh, and then I also do other photography outside of the um, performance setting as well. Such as this? Yes, that's one of my other photographs. Uh, this is at the Jill Brown Roan Park in Cambridge. And there's this wonderful mosaic on the floor that I just, like, on the, on the ground. And I like the way that the tiles line up against the... The cement? Yeah, the natural concrete blocks. And um, this, again, is on metal. Mm -hmm. Can I show them the back? How you oh, yeah. The back? yeah. So you're using smaller canvases to, to give them the hang mm -hmm. that they need. And it's nice because it gives them a little distance to when they're hung. Right. They I want them to float back. out from the wall so that they don't look like they're just flush against it. But I don't want to have to frame everything because I like having the edges visible. Oh, I do too. As a painter, I don't frame anything. Mm -hmm. And then someone tried to warn me that I was going to run into trouble because I didn't frame anything. Well, depending on how you treat the edges of the canvas, you can get away with it, though. Oh, could you bring me your collage? I can. Now this, am I holding it correctly? Yes. All right. That's another photograph that I took of an announcement board wall where people had just stapled up flyers and they'd st stapled up a ton of flyers and then ripped them down and stapled up more flyers on top of them and kept adding to it. Um, and the piece is called Residue. I have a larger outdoor sign version of that as well. And then the two smaller, more detailed ones. But I just found it fascinating, all of the layered history, and it spoke so much to just human existence and human life, how, how there's so much layered history in everything that becomes hidden or, or other layers get applied on top of. And also the way we communicate mm -hmm. to share events. Mm -hmm. And it's layered. Sometimes we can pull them down and sometimes we don't. I know yep. when I was doing stand, when I had my own show, I would pull down somebody else's flyer. Of course, it was already dated yep. and it already happened. But it does because then you have the staples and the texture. And earlier when we were talking, I was trying to think of an artist who did this, and then it just hit me. It's the artist who is showing now, Anne Johnstone. She took a piece with flyers from supermarkets and layered them. So the two of you, it's interesting. I remember seeing that on the previous interview. That was very cool. And just these, you know, it's an incredible eye that you have to see the art in this and then to frame it, and I don't mean physically, not this, but with your camera, you're able to frame it for us so that we can appreciate it also. Because when I saw this, this made me smile. Oh. I, I felt like, oh my God, that's my home. Not exactly people, but that's, I, I felt very drawn to that. Now, how long does it take you to work on your images? I'm having, okay. How long does it take you to work on your images and to the whole process? Um, as a, I, I wouldn't say that it's a particularly time-intensive process for me. It's just that it's always going. Like, it's always on. So I'm always taking pictures pretty much everywhere I go and then editing them and, and kind of culling them and figuring out which images I like and which ones I don't. Uh, sometimes, if I have something in mind, I'll go out of my way to go and do that. Um, that piece actually evolved because I had something else in mind and the light wasn't working for me that day. But I just loved how the sunlight coming through that leaf looks so much like stained glass. I love shooting photographs of the sky. Well, this did work. This did work out. It's very dramatic and it has a very surreal feel to it. Like you can feel the hand and you're there. Mm -hmm. You're there looking at that person, looking at that object. And it also, as an as someone who might think, for people who don't think that they have artistic side, you've shown them a lesson in just the placement mm -hmm. that our actions can produce art as well. So this, for those of you that are shy, maybe you didn't get this on film or you, no one painted it, but you've created performance art mm -hmm. in doing this. Oh, and that's very true, and it's one of the things that's probably one of the strongest aspects of why I do art in the first place, is I want to have that connection in regards to things that, that people take for granted, that are such everyday things, and that anyone can do. I don't want to make something that's inaccessible in that regard. I want to be able to encourage people to explore their own creativity and to find their own voice in it. Which is very important. That's one of the reasons 
I give for doing the show, my commitment, is I feel like there are inner kids, inner artists, mm -hmm. who were maimed by some teacher who mistook one drawing for another. Mm -hmm. And then you come out and you correct that for us. And you give people the inspiration. Even your hat. Now tell us about your hat. This is one of a series of hats that I had made for a performance originally. And she did ask me to put on the other one, but I had a good hair day, so that's why I didn't do it. <laughs> um, I've got two remaining out of, out of ten. And the performance was called Blossom. And I invited people to uh, blossom on stage with a watering can, and then as they blossomed, the hat would be placed on their head. And uh, these are just St. Patrick's Day hats that I modified with new flowers. Actually, they should wear them during St. Patrick's Day, too. I consider, nice. I consider this to be my Green Garden Bowler series. I remember you said that, yes. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice. Thank you. I, I thought it was sort of symbolic of spring, May being the coming of spring. Well, and I'm ready. <laughs> depends on what the weather how yeah. it holds up. Now, this is very interesting to me. Wallets or hand pocket, a little small purse. And then, because it's general, I guess <laughs> it's not going to be just a purse. It's going to be the story of, say it for me. The little black dress. I love this, ladies, because, guys, I don't know if you can get into this, but we who love clothes, this is the story of our little black dress. <laughs> and, oh, I just... Is there anything that you want to say about these various poses? And They're all very snapshot-oriented photographs that were shot to explore how people's perceptions change within local regions mm -hmm. um, based on how they think people should act or dress. And I wanted to show that we're more alike than we are different. So I accessorized according to some of those preconceptions. Uh, this is all based, again, in St. Louis, where I was from. But um, despite the accessories kind of feeding into that, the little black dress shows that we're all more alike than we are different. Yeah, we have that little black dress in our heart. Mm -hmm. And so, and then everyone thinks of a different way to acknowledge it. And I just love your presentation. Oh, thank you. Because this is the perfect, perfect, you should, this will be a great gift for fashionista. Whoever you are, if you are fashionista, put this on your list and then give it to someone who can contact you. And then you'll get this. This is perfect. And you did books. I do. I, I have a couple of different books. And I, this, this, I just love this. I, I, it's so spontaneous, and it makes you smile, and it is um, joyful, and wow. These, those performances I did on uh, a trip that I had gone to Kansas to visit my best friend. Uh, this was a little while back after she'd moved there. How did you even balance yourself there? And, well, it's actually not that high up. Okay. Um, but we were exploring different parts of Kansas, and I wanted to create a series of just child, like things that remind you of being a child and, and having that sense of wonder and experiencing the immensity of the sky. The sky in Kansas is, is just phenomenal because you can see for so far. Now, is this sand or what is Powdered that? sugar. Oh, okay. I, I had, the concept between this series of these performances was the idea of creating clouds. Ah, and you do that quite well. The Greek, I get the feeling of a Greek goddess here. And they're all just different interactions that draw different attention to the sky in, in a variety of ways. I mean, a lot of them explore the powdered sugar at the one site, but there's others that explore other interactions with the sky as well. Now, will these be available for sale? The books are not. Those are all artist copies. Okay. But I am going to have them here if people want to come and look at them. All right. And then we have my favorite, but I'll cover the word because I know that some people <laughs> may get upset. But this is performance art that involved puppy dogs and dogs. Mm -hmm. And so, and the cover, can you explain what this is? Well, the entire piece, um, for the duration of the show that this was included in, I spent the working gallery hours 
uh, in this dog crate. Uh, and let me show you these pictures of this is the these are the dog crates. Yes. So every day that the gallery was open, I was kind of around the corner from the um, from the entrance to the gallery, and I I spent every day that the gallery was open while they were open. I was in the dog crate, and it was as a commentary on how we treat one another, uh, how we become confined by our perceptions of each other and by derogatory language, and also as a means of raising awareness of puppy mills. Um, they were a really big problem in Missouri for a long time. They were one of the top five states for puppy mills at one wow. point. And explain and, puppy mills to our audience. Um, that's when people are, are breeding dogs in very subpar conditions, just basically to, to create puppies to sell. I mean, it's, it's commodifying the animal in order to, to raise these puppies, these purebred puppies. A lot of them have a lot of problems. And uh, they worked on a lot of legislation in the state of Missouri to try to make it more difficult for people to set up these kinds of, of businesses there. And we've had that same issue in, in uh, Massachusetts um, where, and for uh, dog fights. Mm -hmm. And so I found this book very powerful. And tell, you spent like six hours? It was around six to seven hours a day that I was there during the show. Um, I think it amounted to around 72 hours total. And that has to be a strain. I mean, it's, for some people, they're thinking, oh, you're just laying down. But you're in a very confined space. Mm -hmm. And um, if no one's coming to see, if you get those lags of nobody there, it could be boring. Um, but in some sort of way, I find it, I think that you would still find some, something out of it. I'm sure that you produce more art as, after this. Well, and the interesting thing is, actually, it was almost worse sometimes where people would keep coming back and they knew you'd be a captive audience because you weren't going to leave. So you'd wind up kind of with the opposite circumstance, too, where the same people would keep coming back knowing you would be there. See, I'm um, trying to think captive actor. Yeah. So it was kind of an interesting, interesting way of relating. Um, and it's a powerful statement for so many things, um, including what you had said about how people perceive difference. Mm -hmm. And again, going back to the little black dress, how one symbol, and then you take it into different areas to give it meaning elsewhere. Mm -hmm. The black dress you moved around, and in this, you moved yourself around to show the different characters mm -hmm. that you were depicting. Yeah. When did you decide to combine performance art and your gift for color and photography? Well, my evolution into performance art wasn't an immediate thing. It was actually a, kind of a strange journey and not one that I would have expected to find myself on. Mm -hmm. I had started off originally in fiber art because I love costume and I love clothes and I love pattern and texture and fabrics. And that interest evolved into performance art when I transferred schools and they didn't have a fiber art program. And they basically were, I was offered two options. I could either transfer credits into papermaking or I could transfer credits into alternative media and emphasize more the costume based stuff. And the really interesting thing is that I actually struggle with very, very challenging social phobia. And so for me to put myself out there and do performance is, is a real challenge, but that's part of why I put myself in those circumstances, to prove that I can overcome that. And Describe performance art for the audience that may not know what it is. It varies from piece to piece. I tend to do a lot more durational work, so I'll do things like put myself out during the gallery show in the cage, for example. Um, I have other pieces coming up where I'm doing durational things during other performances um, where I'm sitting and, and working at a laptop for a length of time. But uh, essentially, for me, I take a lot of everyday actions and then take them out into the public arena and then perform them as though they're more than that. 
So it, it kind of comes from a lot of different places and different approaches. Some people come at it from the idea of creating monologues and having a lot to say and doing very intense speaking and spoken word things. Uh, most of my work tends to be more silent um, and explores a lot of different identity-based. It's like the mime, mm -hmm. correct? Um, somewhat, yeah, yeah. But you're doing it in full color. Yes. Yes. And you're, you're more engaging than, because the mind was usually for comedy, comedic value. But you're doing comedic value, but you're also doing, that's just a side. Mm -hmm. There's the message that you're trying to get through. Mm -hmm. And that's true for a lot of, of, a lot of the silent works along those lines too, is that they often have other messages and, and mm -hmm. things that they're trying to convey as well. You're making me think too of silent movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the discipline that was needed. I mean, people would talk, but you had to be right in sync with the, the camera. Mm -hmm. And it took a great deal of discipline to get the faces correct and the imagery correct. And so you've taken that to a whole new level. In a different context, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of that too is all about timing. And for me, I'm interested in drawing out that, that length of time to where it becomes almost absurd. And you do it so well. Oh, thank you. you. Give us, um, we can laugh, but we're learning at the same time. And you're not mocking anyone. It's, you, you have lessons for us to learn. And I so appreciate that, because it's easy to mock someone. Um, that's what I've never felt comfortable with in stand-up comedy. Mm. Well, there are certain people like a candidate that might be running right now that has a really big mouth. But other times, it's um, some people pick the people that need the protection. Mm -hmm. And I admire your work. I just wasn't prepared when you told me, when you were trying to explain this all to me. It was, uh, you really took me and you made, I, you, my brain was like, what is she doing? She <laughs> must be here. I must see this. And Somerville, you must see it too. Because for the month of May, when you're here, and we're going to arrange a, we'll come back to you with a date for the reception. Mm -hmm. This is, th this is everything. Will you be doing performance art when you're, um, will you be performing during the um, reception? Not per se, but I don't often differentiate between my art and my life all that much. So there's not a very defined border between the two. I, I'll Which certainly come in some kind of costume, much like I have today. Well, for many of us, that dress is not a costume. No, and it that, isn't that for is me. A, that it's, is a way of life mm -hmm. that represents the 60s and all its freedom and its, like, go-go stuff. And I, because I used to deal in vintage clothing, and I've always loved that interest, that color. And, you know, what would you say to inspire other artists or people who think they can't do something, like how you came to, to express yourself this way? I think if I had to impart anything in that regard, it would be to listen to yourself and believe in yourself and not to question that. Um, because everybody has something that they can offer and everybody has a talent and multiple talents and different ways of seeing things and different things that they can do and explore. And that's the beauty of it is we're all so unique. And you took your camera, which I didn't ask, but just in a, a minute or so, because we don't have much time. How long have you been a photographer? Um, Pretty much for as long as I've been doing art. I mean, it's always kind of been there on the sideline. It's it's never been... I, I shift between a lot of different things. I wear a lot of hats, but photography's always been one of them. Because you do the shifting very beautifully. Oh, thank it's you. It's very graceful, and you take us through. It's like you, you hold our hands so that we're not alone. And just so you see, I don't know if this, this might be too small for the <laughs> um, exhibit, but this is great. There's a wallet. Oh, people. <laughs> this is so wonderful. There's, there's a story behind that. Well, keep the story. I will. When, when, we do the, when you do your um, reception, then people can come by and see this work and enjoy it. You're going to love Jennifer. She's so cool. 
and uh, you're going to enjoy being at SCAT. Her work will make you laugh, and we need all the laughter we can get. And it'll make you smile and appreciate everything that's around you. I want to thank you for that, because sometimes we take things for granted. That I, I'm guilty of that, too, and thank you. I appreciate that, because that's one of the things that I try to do with my art. It's so uh, meaningful. And if you're having a bad day or someone's having a bad day, you drag them right down here because SCAT's hours are very flexible. So, you know, it's uh, just come on down, month of May. You can even ask for Adam, who is someone who is here in the studio now, and he's, he's going through a lot with me today um, because we have a special relationship. And um, he's laughing now. But he's really great in his work here, as are Erica and Isabella and Jason and just and who, whoever I forgot. Um, oh, and Brian, who is our new, who is uh, new to the staff, but he will be the new executive director. And um, this is the place you need to be. And community access television is the tool that you use to express yourself. The people that work here will help you do that. And the artists that we bring forward will help you do that. And artists, if you need to, come on down and see me, Adam or Erica, because we're always looking for more artists. So it is almost time for us to close. And um, any other words of wisdom? Just the same, again, be true to yourself. And get a St. Patrick's Day hat, and then you too can convert it into something. <laughs> or any other hat that you may have, you know, because we like our hats. And uh, if you can't figure out what to do with it, then come down and see the artist, and she can give you some tips. <laughs> and if you're shy and you need to get out of your shell, come down here, because the artist can give you some tips on that too. And no matter what's going on, she will make you smile. And it's cheaper than therapy and better than meds. Oh, I've never said that before on the air. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Um, I thank you so much for taking the time to come in and speak to us. And just bend your head just a little so they can see a little more of the hat. See, see that? People, you could do that. Oh my goodness, we could have a hat show. Oh, that'd be fun. Jason's not, you know, Jason's like in the other room just going, no, no. <laughs> Adam doesn't even want to look over in this direction. But we can get an Adam hat. Uh, this would be wonderful. Maybe you can come back and we'll do a hat thing. That would be fun. A fashion show. Yes. And then you could take photographs of people in their personas with their hats. I can't believe we're coming up with this show idea right here. <laughs> so until our next, till June, when we come back with a new artist. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here. And assalamu alaikum, which means peace be to you always. Take care of yourselves. Take care of the people next to you, around you, and every place else. And have fun and enjoy the color. And we're really getting spring, from what I understand. It's really coming. And if you don't believe me, you come down and see the work. Thank you. See you soon. <laughs>